and we're off. Hey, what's up? It is Monday, September 10th, 4.22 p.m. Might be 4.25. How late is it? Anyway, it's Murphy's Law Monday. This is the 4.20 report. I'm calling it Murphy's Law Monday because according to Murphy's Law, anything that will go wrong can go wrong. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about regarding my last weekend in the Dakotas. Holy crap. A lot of ups and downs. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm going to give it to you real. I'm going to give it to you raw. Right here, right now, on this edition of the 420 Report. Whoo! So, thanks for joining in. Leave me a comment. Like, Martha, good to see you. Um, otherwise, I can't really tell who's watching. Sometimes I can tell. D, what's up? Hit me up with a comment or a question. Give me a like, a love. Hit the share button if you're so inclined. Let's get some more viewership going and the conversation going. I'm going to tell you all about my last weekend in the Dakotas. I got a speeding ticket. Well, I didn't get a ticket. I got a warning. Uh, pulled over for going 67 in a 65. So I got a little rant and raving to do about that. Have you ever got pulled over for bullshit like that? Two over? Two over the speed limit? Are you kidding me? That's a bored cop. That means there is not enough crime in South Dakota to warrant that many popo out on the highway. What the hell? Are you kidding me? Hey, Ricky Rose in the house. Ricky Rose. That's such a great name, man. That sounds like the bassist for an 80s hair band. Uncle Sideball, good to see you. Ashton Dillon is in the house. Hey, shout out to Ashton and all the folks at the Junkyard Bar and Grill. They brought in Nathan Allen, the Maniac of Magic, last Saturday night. Um, what else do we have going on? We had a lot going on. I'm going to be teaming up with Nathan in the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show this Saturday night in Tiffin, Ohio. We go all the way to Tiffin, Ohio. So Ohio fans and friends and followers, get your tickets, man. I'll post the information in the video description above as soon as I get wrapped up here. It's at the Eagles Club. The Eagles Clubs are great places to do comedy. They're blue-collar people. They like to work hard. They like to play hard. They get together on the weekends. We always tear it up. It's such a great crowd. You know, they're clever enough that they're going to get the material, but they're not so sensitive that they're going to be offended by anything raunchy that we have to say. You know, it is called the Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks show for a reason. I'm the Dirty Jokes, Nathan's the Magic Tricks, and I don't like to work for these crowds that you have to hold your tongue, that you got to, you know, censor yourself while you're on stage. I think the best comedy is stuff that comes from the heart, off the top of your head, and if I got to sit there and think about what word or what should I say that may or may not offend anybody, and and then try to tailor the joke around that. You know, it's just making the show too goddamn difficult. That's probably, that's a good, you know, last week I was talking about the fundamentals of comedy. And that's a good fundamental to have in your come up years in order to learn how to structure jokes and not rely on the crutch of blue material. Hey Matt, what's up? Tim's here. Just talking about the Eagles Club, man. Shout out to you all the way from Azusa Eagles Club out there. We're doing the Tiffin Eagles Club this Saturday night. The Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show. All oh, right on. Thanks for the share. Um, but like I was saying, you know, I like to keep it real. I like to keep it raw. I've been at this 20 damn years now. you think I'd be a hell of a lot more famous than I am. But uh, <laughs> I'm good at comedy. I'm not good at becoming a celebrity. Let's just put it that way. Um, when you're coming up, though, you got to learn how to do clean material. You know, for just so that way you've learned how to actually write jokes and be funny and clever in the moment. Because if you're not clever, if all you got is dirty, offensive, shocking shit, you're dead in the water. You know, that's all there is to it. You know, you got you got to have more than just blue material. So when you're coming up, it's good to work clean. But once you get there and once you know how to work the crowd and once you're friends with them, like what I try to be when I'm going around the country, I'm doing these nightclubs, taverns, and neighborhood bars. I like to turn all my people, all my audience members into friends. So I like to just talk to them like I'm talking to you right now in a friendly tone of voice. And sometimes I get amped up. Sometimes I start ranting and raving like crazy. But I think that's when some of the best material comes out. And if I'm trying to do that and keep it real and be in the moment, yet worry at the same time, worry about 
what fucking word I'm going to say in order to complete the thought. Yeah, I admit, sometimes I use the F word in place of um. Sometimes there probably is a more clever way to say what it is that I said. I fucking get that. But that's why I make the video. I go back and I watch it and I go, oh, what better wording could I use for that joke? Or what else could I say instead of the F word there? You know, sometimes it's just a placeholder while I'm collecting my thoughts to come up with the clever, witty line that I'm about to say next. A lot of times the cursing has nothing to do with the actual joke itself. It just has to do with, hey, listen, this is who I am. This is what I'm all about. Take it or leave it. I'm not for everybody. Everybody's not for me. But that's what I was saying. We go do the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show at these Eagles clubs. They like the clever material. They're going to get the clever material, but they're not easily offended if you get a little bit raunchy with them. I don't know, man. I think that's what makes the best stuff. Just keeping it real. Keep it honest. Keep it direct. Oh, I want to show you this. I want to talk about the new business that I have going on. Uh, it's the uh, Polish Museum of America. <laughs> I don't know why I keep getting mail to the Polish Museum of America. Like, I have anything to do with the Polish Museum of America. I I don't know. Maybe they did that Amazon. Like, there's that test that you can get that tells you your your uh, heritage and your ethnicity where you, you spit on the card or whatever, and then you send it back in, and they tell you what your heritage is for, like, the last thousand years. I want to do one of those tests. I haven't actually done one, but maybe it will come up that I'm Polish. I don't know. I lived in a Polish neighborhood, Wicker Park. When I lived in Chicago for like 12 years, and now it's been five years since we moved to Chicago, and I'm still getting mail to the Polish Museum of... In fact, I didn't even get... I didn't get mail to the Polish Museum of America when I lived in Chicago. I get it now that I live in Iowa. But I did get a free pen. I did get a free pen. So if anybody else wants a free pen, let me know. <laughs> Apparently, they'll send these to me. That's what it is. It's just a free pen offer. The Polish Museum of America. So that's my new business. I'm in the museum business now. I'm, I'm curating. Cur curating dirty jokes. What would they even have in the Polish Museum of America? What would they have there? Would they have like the gun that points backwards at the person that's shooting it? <laughs> Would they have like a display where there's like six different dudes all trying to change the light bulb? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what would be in the Polish Museum of America, even if I did work at one. But anyway, I keep getting that mail. That's crazy. Oh, and then I got the fucking speeding ticket. I got pulled over for doing 65, 67 in a 65 last week. I'm driving home from Fort Pierce, South Dakota. Shout out to Teresa and Jason Gilk. They're at T's Tavern for bringing me in. It was a small crowd. I won't, I'm not going to lie to you right now. Usually I like to talk, talk about these big crowds. How I'm filling up clubs and bars every single weekend I'm on the road. But this place is about half full. They got in like a maybe 30 people. If they'd gotten in 50 or 60, it pretty much would have been a packed house. I like doing the small bars and clubs. A lot of bars and clubs that bring me in, they're like, oh man, I bet this is one of the smallest places you've ever performed. But I actually like the small bars. Hey Mike, what's up? Mike Lee and Michael Smith, if that is your real name. DJ1226 checking in, man. I was just about to talk to my, talk about my trip up to Mandan, North Dakota. That's actually not how you say it. They immediately corrected me as soon as I got on stage. That's another fundamental of stand-up comedy. Learn how to pronounce the fucking name of the town. Because if you don't know, they will let you know right off the bat. And if you don't got the chops in order to turn that into something quick and clever and funny and make fun of yourself over it, do something self-deprecating, or have the balls to continue to mispronounce it wrong just as a way to get people's goat, you know? Uh... Give them a little bit of a hard time. Like, you better learn how to say the name of the town. Especially, like, if your act isn't strong enough. That was a mistake I used to make way back in the day. I would mispronounce the name of the town, and then people would immediately get pissed off. That's like a source of pride for them, especially in a lot of these small towns that I would visit. And then it was like digging myself out of a hole for the next 20 minutes that I was on stage after that. But now it's like I can mispronounce the name of the town. I know how to turn it into some material like I did in Mandan, North Dakota, last week at the High Seas Bar or the Seven Seas Bar, wherever it was. It's the Baymont Inn. That was a lot of fun. So shout out to everybody up there. Um, one zero one. What is it? Z one zero zero one Productions. 
something like that. I should look that look that up. Something Zero Productions with Trey and DJ Twelve Twenty Six and my opening act Ed Burrows, who is, does stand up comedy even though he's in a wheelchair. And he was real cool, man. He's from my neck of the woods. I, you know, I didn't even realize this, but he just lives like 30 minutes away. We could have been doing shows together a long time ago, traveling around the country. Kid's in a freaking wheelchair, and he still makes his way all the way up to Mandan, North Dakota, just to entertain the people for just a little bit of money, man. That's dedication. That's the kind of shit you got to have. You can't sit there and worry about what your circumstances are and feel sorry for yourself. If you want to do something, fucking figure out the way to go get it. Go get it done, son. That's just my little bit of motivational speech for you. Hey, Michael, what's up? We got a lot of mics watching today. How are you, man? Uh, so last weekend, Tees Tavern, Fort Pierce, Fort Pierce, South Dakota. It was a lot of fun. Small crowd, like 20 or 30 in the audience, but they were a real cool group of people, mainly because they decided to come see my show instead of the impromptu country band festival that was taking place downtown, where they're offering up like three country bands for free. It's hard to compete with that kind of shit, you know? Jared Dog Comedy Show, what the hell, man? Come on out. And you can go see a country band anytime. People go see the country bands every week. Every week they'll go out and see the same goddamn band at the bar. Come do something new and different, something exciting. Jared Dog Comedy Show at your neighborhood bar or club. I'll be bringing Nathan Tricky Allen with me this Saturday night to Tiffin, Ohio. If I got any Ohio fans, friends, or followers watching right now, hit the like button, hit the share button especially, and check out the video description above. I'll put all the information for the show that we're doing this Saturday night at the Eagles Club in Tiffin. Hopefully I won't get a traffic ticket driving back. It sucks, man. Like... You know, I got out-of-state plates everywhere I go. You know these fuckers in South Dakota. They're just sitting there bored out of their mind. There's like, you know, a hundred miles between every town. You're driving through South Dakota and North Dakota. I don't know if any, if you've ever made that drive or not, but you go past these signs that say things like 100 miles until your next food or gas. You know, 90 miles until next services. And you know that the state troopers are up there just bored out of their goddamn minds, which is why they're pulling over dudes like me with out-of-state plates for only going two miles over the fucking speed limit. I swear to God I had that damn cruise control set at 65. They should give a little bit of a leeway there, don't you think? I always thought there was. I used to always set my cruise at four miles above the speed limit, thinking that I could go at least that fast without getting pulled over. Apparently not. Apparently in South Dakota there is so little little crime, so little protecting and serving that they have to do that they got to try to bust guys like me for going two miles over. Are you kidding me? You know they're fishing. They're just fishing. Usually I like having cops. I'm a, I'm a supporter of the po police. I really am. I like having cops, especially in the front row at the comedy show. They're a great foil. I start ranting and raving and I find out some guy in the front row is a cop. Like, I can work that in the material back, like, over and over and over and do a back and forth with the guy up front, you know, for the, the entire show. Keep referring back to him. It's the perfect foil. Like I said, it's a good authority figure that you can make fun of in real time to the rest of the crowd. And most of the time, the cops that are in the front row at the comedy show, they laugh harder than anybody else, especially at the raunchy shit. You know, they've seen it all. They've done it all. They're good audience members. But they suck when I'm out there on the road just trying to get my ass home. The hell you doing pulling me over for doing six, two miles over the speed limit? There's got to be fucking better shit to do than that. Hey, Michael, what's up? I'm good, brother. Glad you're mispronouncing shit and everything's good for you. Uh, Trisha, like Terry from town here. Yo, Terry... I know Officer Terry from up there in Old Wine. He's actually pretty damn cool. I like that dude. He, you know, he comes out to the show like you see. Yeah, he's per, he's the perfect foil to have sit in the front row where I can do a back and forth. And he usually has no problem speaking up when I ask him a question, which then, of course, can be turned into material. And it's not always about making fun of him. It's not always about, like, you know, ridiculing somebody. 
that's what people say to me all the time. And one of the misconceptions, the biggest misconceptions people have, I should have named this Misconception Monday. One of the biggest misconceptions that people have about stand-up comedians is that if you sit in the front row, you're automatically going to get picked on. Well, there's two things I have to say about that. Number one, me just asking people questions in the audience to try to turn that into material isn't picking on them. You get to choose your own level of involvement. I'm not going to persist with a line of questions or force somebody to participate that doesn't want to. If they seem like they're open and willing and ready to go and they want to do a little back and forth, I'll work that and milk that shit all night long. But if they, if I can tell that they're hesitant, they're sitting there with their arms clocked and they don't want to answer the questions, that's just like beating a dead horse. I'm not going to pursue that. You choose your own level of involvement. And it has nothing to do with whether you sit in the front row or not. Especially a lot of these small town neighborhood bars and clubs that I perform at, the whole goddamn place is the front row. Are you kidding me? It has nothing to do with sitting in the front row. A lot of times people are scared to sit in the front row because they think they're automatically going to get picked on. We had a little bit of that last week at T. Tavern in Fort Pierce, South Dakota. I get on stage, you know, the place has got like 20 or 30 people in the crowd, right? But they're all sitting like three, four rows back, the entire first row of tables. Nobody's sitting there. So now you've got this giant moat of space that you've got to try to project through. That you got to, you know, you've got to overcome the space before you can connect with people. It's way easier to connect with people when you're right up front, close and personal, like this. You know what I'm saying? This isn't creepy at all. This is how you connect with people. I'm messing with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I just like to see people right up there so I can look them directly in the eye. I can talk to them face to face. I can see exactly what the reactions are. So I know how to continue to customize and can, uh, create and uh, develop the routine from there. But if everybody's sitting like a million miles in the fucking back because they're afraid to get picked on, number one, that's not the determination anyway. Just no matter what, no matter where you're sitting. Sitting, there is the potential that you may be called upon to participate in the show for one reason or another. And just because I call on you to participate in the show, A, doesn't mean you have to, and B, doesn't mean I'm picking on you. You know, I, in fact, I think a lot of comedians have done that to themselves, and it kind of pisses me off a little bit when a comedian runs out of material and he just immediately goes in the crowd and starts picking on people, just starts ridiculing people for really no reason whatsoever other than the fact that they got nothing left to go on you know they're out of gas they're still on stage trying to fill time but they're completely they got no more material in the tank i think the best way to do it is let it be organic let it flow naturally let it go off go let it go you know let, let it come from off the top of your head like i always say let it come openly and honestly and speak from the heart the same way i do these videos the same way i talk to you right now just keep it lively and keep it fun cool and fun and friendly Everybody in that audience is my friend. I'm not there to pick on my friends. I might bust your balls a little bit, but people bust my balls all the time. If you can dish it out, you can fucking take it. That's true for comedians. That's true for audience members. I don't know, but what, I'm just a douchebag. I like to ran rave and fucking video phones and on a microphone in front of strangers 100 nights a year. Tim. Trisha says he's a blast to drink with. I bet he is. I bet. I assume you're still talking about Officer Terry. I bet he can tear it up. Because he's got a stressful job. You know, I'm not here to rank on the cops. I know you got a stressful job, but you make it more stressful by pulling over some poor schmuck that's trying to get home to his family on a Sunday afternoon because he's doing 67 and a 65. You fucking kidding me? Tim's good thing they didn't look in the trunk. <laughs> Dude, just keep that between us. Come on, man. I don't I don't need this reputation getting out. You know, I do these videos at 420 p.m. Not for you to get up here and bust my balls about it. <laughs> uh any more questions or comments no that's it whoo what a day i don't even know how long i've been ranting and raving it looks probably about 20 minutes and i'm running out of shit to talk about come see me this saturday night Tiffin, Ohio, Nathan Allen, the Maniac of Magic, Nathan Tricky Allen will be my co-star in the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show, the Tiffin Eagles Club, this Saturday, September 15th. This Friday, I'm going to be in Chicago at an Entrepreneur's Mastermind meeting. That's a lot of fun, man. I know I rant and rave a lot about getting on stage and doing the show, but in order to make that happen, you got to learn the business and promotion side. If you don't got a fucking audience there, it ain't worth getting on stage and telling jokes, now is it? 
So that's part of the, my job is I got to make sure that I use all the tactics and strategies in order to make sure we put butts in seats, just like we'll be doing this Saturday, Tiffin, Ohio, September 15th, Eagles Club. Also, next week, I'll be in my home state of Iowa, September 21st, Charles City at Hot Shots Billiards, also with Nathan Allen and the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show. Next Saturday night, Chatfield, Minnesota, at the Chatfield Country Club, also the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show. You can go to dirtyjokesandmagictricks.com to check out some videos and more shit about that. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's three hours. We do three hours. That's basically two shows for the price of one. There's an intermission in there to give people a chance to go outside, order more drinks, go outside, have a smoke, maybe take a shit, do whatever they got to do. But it's three hours, again, breaking the rules of comedy. You know, when you're first coming up, they always teach you, don't ever do shows that are more than 90 minutes. You can't keep their attention. Well, once you figure out the fundamentals, once you figure out how to make a show interesting every goddamn minute of it, and you're doing a lot of audience participation, you can break the rules. You can do a three-hour event. We make it happen. That's given a lot of value. Two shows for the price is one. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. Next weekend, I've got more shit coming up. I'll be back tomorrow, 4.20 p.m., or as close as possible. Thanks for watching. This is Jared Dog, over and out. Dog bless America.